Oh, we're going to have some fun, are we? In the two games that I don't own, not the one that I bought, or the free one that I never wanted. What is this launcher? G'day there, I'm Snake of Bacon, and this is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Not to be confused with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. No, no. This is the fourth Modern Warfare game, but it's a reboot. You know, unrelated to Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. No, no. Also unrelated to Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered from 2016, that's this game, but it looks better. No, no, this is Modern Warfare 2019, the 16th game in the series, which you should play before the 19th game in the series, which is going to be called Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But instead of 2, it's 2. The Roman numeral, not the Arabic numeral 2. Duo 2 doesn't help it doesn't help it doesn't help search engine optimization it doesn't help anyone it's just everyone's confused and disturbed but it doesn't matter because this is the best selling shooter in all history 30 million copies and I got a pre-owned for 20 bucks and the price went back up again so um, was it worth it for the campaign let's see do you like the world's most obvious mature content notice? Maybe it isn't that obvious. A lot of parents do buy these games for their primary school age children. Maybe it would be better to say, Hey parents, there is a level where you play as a seven year old child, but you're fleeing genocide and killing people with a flathead screwdriver. And if that doesn't horrify you or your child, there's a few dozen F words in the game. <gasps> oh no. Come to think of it, I probably used a few dozen F words during the installation process. You see, I buy this game in early 2021, I put the disc in, the disc has nothing on it except for the firing range, I install a 90 gigs of updates for Warzone, I get in the game and find out there's no game, it's just Warzone until I download all these packs, and I download all these packs and I go, well, I'll get around to playing that campaign later, and then what happens? Vanguard launches, Warzone Pacific, 90 gigs more updates, all my packs are outdated. The campaign and split screen and everything's uninstalled itself. Install all the packs, find out I've got a mix of old and new packs that are incompatible and nothing will work. Uninstall the entire game, reinstall the game, installing only the packs that say campaign, find out you actually need more than what the game tells you, install every single freaking pack and then the game works. And when it does work, it's got a good campaign. Obviously, massive production values. This is a very, very big budget game and it looks very pretty. Take a look at Alex here. This is a cutscene, and at some point, I'm not sure where, we switch from cutscene to game. Well, it's definitely the game now, because the bars have gone away. But look at that! Now, this is an ugly, disgusting 720p 30fps video, I understand. It's hard for me to tell you how pretty this game actually is, even on a base PS4 running at 60fps and at least somewhere around 1080p. Look at this tree! It's got vines, illuminated by moonlight through fog. It's very pretty, obviously. As a late 2019 release, it's one of the last big multi-platform games for PS4 and Xbox One only, and not the next gen. And the budget for dozens of millions, with thousands of artists working on it, probably helped. The lighting is fantastic. I mean, look at the way the torch lights up the tree. Or don't. I shouldn't have my torch on that tree. I do appreciate good scripting like that. And I of course appreciate the torch. I believe most of the campaign was built around making you appreciate the torch with these horror game dark levels. Of course dark ooh, of course darkness hides details. Very easy to show off these fancy graphics in a dark enclosed space. There are daylight missions too where you can appreciate the obviously brown palette of Uzbekistan and shoot at destructible fruit. Amazing destructible fruit. Bread's invincible though. Now if I were a clever man, I'd pick up this bread or cake or whatever it is, stick it in my vest, I'd be invincible. No one could stop me. But Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1, the second, uh, the, the fourth, the, this current one, it's not about bread, it's about terrorism. Terrorist attack. The hint was in my title, it's not World War II or Vietnam, it's modern warfare. 
a fictional war with allegorical references to the recent past and actual present, set in the same old near-future Eurasia where American military fiction writers salivate over the prospect of using their new guns to shoot at people from Russia in the politically sensitive area. Your enemies in this set-piece London level are Al-Qatala, a fictional terrorist organisation from a fictional country known as Urzikstan, supposedly located nowhere near Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kurdistan or Istanbul. Somehow, it's right next to the Caucasus Mountains, yet it's a desert. Urzikstan, the impossibly convenient training dummy version of the Middle East, since the writers, developers and publishers wouldn't touch the actual Middle East with a barge pole, allowing the game to have Arab characters but without any Arab politics. Anyway, this ridiculous situation is probably for the best. I understand the reasonings behind it. This is a AAA game, not SBS World News. At no point was there a promise to teach you anything about the real world. It's a form of escapism. It's just weird having very real London and very false Ozikstan. Moving on from that, this is Farah Karim. Oh, the screen's on Alex again. There, this is Farah Karim, played by Australian actress Claudia Domit through the wonders of motion capture, and this is Alex, played by Chad Michael Collins. 48 hours ago, terrorists stole a shipment of Russian gas. Only Alcatala would do this. <laughs> the Russians make no distinction between Alcatala and your people. And I make no distinction between Alcatala and the Russian army. They're both terrorists. Terrorism is a loaded word with no one clear definition, but for the purposes of this story, it usually means chlorine. We would never use these poisons. The general consensus is that spreading chlorine gas is a war crime and has been since the 1899 Hague Convention, although that was ignored by the German army in World War I because it specifically outlawed spreading asphyxiating poison gases through projectiles and not through big canisters in the ground, which is why we now have the Geneva Protocol. But anyway... Discounting the customizable protagonist from Black Ops 3, Farah Karim is the first playable female character in a Call of Duty campaign, debuting just six years after the series' first playable German Shepherd dog, Riley. Likely because that factoid paints a poor picture of representation in the Call of Duty series, Modern Warfare 2019 was sure to include many female characters. Kate Laswell on the right is the CIA operative who talks to the main characters quite a few times in the game. In this case, she's talking to a female general, and so the Bechdel test is passed. I think that's how it works. Rounding out the cast are our British blokes, Kyle Garrick and Captain John Price. No, no! I'll show you. You armed up? Yes, sir. <laughs> Captain Price. Sergeant Garrick. You with me? In several levels you play as Sergeant Garrick, but you never play as Captain Price. You only experience him. In this reboot universe, he's a bit younger and has a more northern accent, but the core of the character is still the same. A distillation of every manliness tutorial. A strong, pragmatic mentor with amazing facial hair who's somehow rugged yet distinguished at the same time. Elliot Knight does a good job as Garrick, but Barry Sloan steals every scene he's in as Price and is a worthy successor to Billy Murray. As to the quality and variety of the campaign, I think they've made quite a good seven-hour experience here. Yes, it's not a very long game, no Call of Duty ever has been. But it's pretty dense, and it's full of things you would not expect, as well as things you would. Of course, there's a sniping mission and a stealth mission, but I was not expecting a house-clearing mission, and there is one. Many of the previous Call of Duty games have had slow-mo door-breaching sequences, but this is a real-time whole-house-breaching sequence. And you know how many doors are in this house? So many. And none of them are slow-mo. You just have to get in quick and react fast or, or die and restart checkpoints. But it's a well-done level. Very immersive. In a different level that is also taking place in green night vision, note that we're outdoors now, I picked up a tiny rope and it suddenly became an enormous rope and that totally ruined my immersion. It's just utterly ridiculous. How was that tiny rope? It's so much bigger now. This is a different rope. I can't take it seriously. Okay, it's, it's not really a major concern. This is one of the longest, most uh, freeform missions of the game. After you abseil into this little area, the level stops being a tunnel and opens up significantly, giving you three things you have to do, if possible, in total stealth. It took me a fair few tries to beat the level on Veteran and a fair few more to get the perfect stealth thing on Recruit, because I'd always get spotted by someone Veteran difficulty in this game is really not hard by Call of Duty standards. It's significantly easier than other ones I've played. That's definitely partly because I've played some harder ones first, but also because in this game none of the combat scenarios are ever quite as hectic as before. 
You'll still frequently die in three bullets and get some random quote either from in the game's universe or from Theodore Roosevelt, Mother Teresa, really anyone. There is no part of this campaign on veteran that's like the second half of one shot one kill in the old modern warfare. Nothing where you're up against an impossible enemy. You just get hit, wait nine seconds, say hello to my little friend, funk, done. You can always hide. You can always hide and pop back out with an excellent weapon. I should note as well, weapon sounds are excellent. This game's sound design is marvellous. It is worth playing this campaign just to test out your new speakers if you get some. On that note about excellent weapons, yeah, the later in the campaign you go, the better the weapons get. Oh, what would I do with 175 shotgun shells? I don't even know, but I'd rather have an underslung grenade launcher. My point is that whenever the game would be as hard as an older Call of Duty game, it gives you the best weapons and a perfect place to hide. I had to turn that up. That's the beautiful sound of swift victory. Near the end of the game, there's a couple of juggernaut enemies with massive armor, but they give you underslung grenade launchers, incendiary rounds, massive shotguns. You have everything you need to deal with them in 20 seconds. You just have to go around a couple of corners. On the whole, Modern Warfare 2019's campaign is a beautiful tech demo, and more than just a showcase for your new speakers and TV, and headphones if you like. It's got really good controls and it plays really nicely. It's not especially hard even on veteran difficulty. There is a realism mode above that which I thought might have had health packs instead of regenerative health. Apparently it does not. It only has a limited HUD. That's the only real change. So it wouldn't be that much harder, but a bit more immersive if you're into that. I'm not going to go play realism mode anytime soon because of the rest of the issues with this game. There's a lot more to Modern Warfare, of course, there's Spec Ops, Spec Ops Survival, which was PS4 exclusive for a year, and Multiplayer. I don't have footage of any of these, which is why I'm showing you Primo Hot Dog Balls instead. Don't worry about it, we'll get back to the game in 20 seconds now. Special Ops in this game has only six missions for you to play solo or co-op, and eight big operations that are four-player online only. I've not yet played the big operations, but I have played a tiny bit of the missions solo. Bit of a shame there's only 6, not 23 like Modern Warfare 2 or 16 like Modern Warfare 3, and hot dog balls are good. Multiplayer is good too, it also exists. You know, most Modern Warfare reviews probably focus on multiplayer, this one does not, because I haven't played that much of it. I've played a bit, it told me about Warzone every few seconds. Yes, I'm aware Warzone's in the game. It's taking up 100 of the 200 gigs of the install. Do I want two-factor authentication for the Activision account that I've associated with my PlayStation Network account to even be able to access this game? Oh, there are far too many systems going on here. Nearly every complaint you could make about modern gaming is espoused by Modern Warfare. The menus are a labyrinth of pop-ups that talk all about their various progression systems, link you towards battle passes and other microtransactions and other things that I've no interest in. Can I just get to split screen? Some menus are stuck. This one had no exit button until I mashed circle heaps of times. I was just looking for split screen in this case. Before I could even do that, as soon as you add a second controller, that second player needs to have a PSN account and associate it with an Activision account. Once you've done all of that, the next time you launch the game, it might work properly. In the bottom left corner, there's a section that has private match, which takes you to local game, which will tell you that it'll kick out player two, which makes you think it might be wrong, but it is correct. And this time I did that, the kicking out caused an error, which took me to offline mode and oh, the simplicity. It's beautiful, just campaign, local multiplayer co-op, not 50 other buttons and things to buy. That's beautiful. I wish I could always have that menu. I can if I turn off my internet. But no one should have to, and no one should have to go through all the shenanigans of all the account creation and association just to play split screen offline. It's insane. The only upside is that when you do get to the offline multiplayer, it's really quite fun. You have heaps of modes, optional bots, and all of the maps. Now that the focus is on keeping the communities together and not splitting them up with map packs and instead just selling everyone cosmetics. Now regarding Warzone, the roughly 100 gigabyte inoperable tumor uh, mandatory installation, Call of Duty Warzone is a free-to-play battle royale game of the popular parachute entry, survival, loot and shoot, hide and seek, shrinky circle routine. And if that doesn't get you going, as it certainly doesn't for me, it also sometimes has team deathmatch on a battle royale scale, which is still not 
ideal, but um, it's at least somewhat more interesting. You have multiple lives and grenade launches. What did you get this one? Yeah! Years of playing Maths is Fun Tanks and Worms and other artillery games led to that moment. Um, Warzone is it's just not for me. It leaves me with the lingering question, why am I here? Especially, why am I in the back of this plane? I can't hit anything from here and my pilot can't fly. In conclusion, Modern Warfare 2019 is a very technically accomplished game. Fun gameplay, grand visuals and remarkably good sound. I could recommend this game purely just for testing out a new TV to see its beauty or new headphones to hear its bass. Mostly I'd recommend the campaign. Multiplayer is hard, it's a fleeting experience. The online multiplayer always has a great migration every November to the next Call of Duty that everyone and their dog goes and buys. I'm sure there'll be a community for this game for a few more years to come, but it's hard to recommend it there. Custom matches with bots can be a lot of fun, and even more fun with a second player and split screen. But I'm hesitant to recommend it because it's about as far from pick up and play as you could possibly get. If you're willing to put up with the process of pick up, install, download compatibility packs, update, sign in, add in an Activision account, do all that again for a second player, then play, then you're going to have some fun but I'd recommend getting a really big external hard drive and buying it pre-owned on a disc. I can't feel sorry for the company missing out on your sales since they sell $30 skins. I don't know who's buying these skins, but whether they're ruining it for the rest of us or actually funding gaming as a whole is a topic for another day. Snake of Bacon signing out, abruptly for the timestamp.